everybody. Today we're going to talk about exponential growth and decay. So we're going to take a look at an exponential function, but that changes over time, whether it grows or shrinks, which is decay. So we're going to take a look at this formula first. So we're going to take a look at growth first. So we have y equals a times the quantity 1 plus r to the t power. Now, I know we can kind of see here what all of this means, but let's take a closer look. So this y, this is our final amount. This is going to be kind of like our final answer here. Now, the a, that's the initial amount. That's what we started with. So if we have a starting salary or a starting amount that changes exponentially, this is what we're going to start with and this is what we're going to finish with. Now we're looking at a percentage. Now remember, one is actually 100%. And our R is our rate, which is our percent. So if I had 100, or if I grew at 7% each year, that would be 107% each year. So that's where the one and the seven, this R comes in. And our T, very important, don't forget about this one. It's time, but more specifically, it is in years. So if we had six months, it would be half a year, two months, two twelves, which is one sixth of a year. So we really have to watch our time. So what does this mean? So if we have an increased, so if we have an initial amount at a festival of 80,000 people, and it increases by 6% each year, what is our anticipated growth rate? So if we look back at our equation, y equals a times the quantity 1 plus r to the t. So I've got my initial amount is 80,000. It's growing 100% plus 6%, so that's 1 plus now remember, 6% is written as 6 hundredths as a decimal t. So what is our final function? y equals 80,000 times 1 and 6 hundredths t. So if I want to know how much will be in the fifth year, I'm going to replace t with 5. So if y equals 80,000 times 1 and 6 hundredths to the fifth power. Now, it's not a super um, nice number. It's actually not too bad, 107,000. But I want to round the nearest thousand. So we're just going to end up with 107,000 people. Now, this is expecting a growth over time. Now, we don't always have growth. Sometimes we have a decay which is uh, a population decrease over time or a decrease in, you know, a bacteria or any type of exponential function here. Now, you'll notice the difference here in our equation. We have y equals a times the quantity 1 minus r to the t. Now, the reason why we're subtracting r here is it's a decay. If things didn't change over time, it would be 100% every year. So if we had in the previous function 80,000 people and it, the population never changed, it would be 100% of that population every year. Now here we have a decay, which means we're going to subtract. Okay, Think about it this way. If I uh, had a discount, so if something costs $10 and I've got a 20% discount, how much am I actually paying them? Well, I have $10. So 100% minus 2 tenths. So I'm really paying 80%. That's what this part of our equation is looking at. So let's figure out if we have a growth or a decay. 
So determine whether each table represents an exponential growth function or an exponential decay function or neither. So if I look here, plus one, plus one. So here I'm increasing by one. So that's good news. Now here it looks like I'm decreasing and it looks like I'm dividing by two, but remember we're looking at a multiplication factor here. So we wanna have a factor here. So dividing by two is the same as multiplying by a half. So this is a decay because well, it's decreasing. So X increases by one and Y is multiplied by a factor of one half. Now here, let's say one, one, one. So this is plus one times 10 times 10. Okay, so this is times 10. So since our y value is increasing, we know this is a growth function. So how do I know? So x, again, increases by one. So we know we're dealing with some sort of function. And then y, is multiplied by a factor of 10. So we've got a growth because our y is increasing. We have a decay because our y is decreasing. So let's take a look. Determine whether each function represents exponential growth or exponential decay, and then identify the percent rate of change. Now, remember, we always start out with 1%. But first, if we take a look at this, since it's greater than 1, I know it's an exponential growth. Okay? And what did this change by? Well, if I started at 1, what did it change by? Well, we can do it mathematically here. So this is represented by 1 plus r, and that equals one and nine hundredths, because this is where this is coming from. Subtract both sides, r equals nine tenths or nine hundredths, so it's a nine percent growth rate. Now here, I see this is less than one. Oops, I forgot to write growth. So this is an exponential growth. This then is going to be an exponential decay because it is decreasing. So I have an exponential decay. Now, where did this come from? What did this change by? Well, looking at it, I can see that if I started at one, it changed by 700. But let's take a look at this mathematically. Because remember, decay is symbolized by one minus r. In this case, it equals 9,300. So subtract one from both sides. So I end up with negative 700 divide by negative one, so r equals 700. Now remember, we're looking at a percentage here, so that's actually 7% decay rate. So I've got an exponential decay at 7%. So let's take a look here at a real life problem. The table shows the balance of a money market account over time. Write a function that represents the balance after t years, okay? So I'm actually gonna skip this graphing part because, well, it's right there. <laughs> so we're looking at our growth here. Now, I can see here that this is increasing by one. Now, this is a little bit trickier part because I know I'm increasing, but how do I go from 300 to 312 to $324.48. Well, we think about it, it can actually work a little bit backwards here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do 365 divided by 305, or I'm sorry, yeah, $350.96. When I do that, I end up with my growth rate of one and four hundredths percent. So I'm looking for my, so we have y equals 
a times one plus r to the t. Now keep in mind we're we keep increasing, so I know it's an it's an exponential increase here. So what's my initial amount? Well, I'm starting with 300. Now I've already done the math here, so I end up with one and four hundredths t. So I've got my exponential decay, or I'm sorry. So I have my exponential growth. Now let's take a look at this one down here. So if I buy a car, unfortunately it loses its value every year. So if I have $15,000 and it loses 10% of its value each year, what is a function? So y equals 15,000 times one minus my rate to the t power. So I end up with y equals 15,000 times 9 hundredths t. So I've got my equation here. Now let's figure out what the value of my car is after six years. So y equals 15,000 times 9 hundredths or 9 tenths to the sixth. So y equals 7,971 dollars and we're going to round this to about $8,000. It's quite a loss after about six years, but eh, that is real life. All right, everybody, have a great day.